So today's topic is on oral hypoglycemics used to control blood sugars in diabetes mellitus. Oral agents work on three defects of type 2 diabetes, which is insulin resistance, decreased insulin production, and increased hepatic glucose production. These drugs may be used in combination with agents from other classes or with insulin to achieve blood glucose control. The first class is bigonides. The most, the most widely used oral diabetes agent is metformin. The different forms of metformin are gluco, glucophage, which is immediate release, and glucophage XR, which is an extended release drug. The primary action of metformin is to reduce glucose production by the liver. It also enhances insulin sensitivity at the tissue level and improves glucose transport into the cells. Metformin is a first choice drug for most people with type 2 diabetes because it may cause moderate weight loss. Metformin may be used for people with type 2 diabetes and prediabetes who are overweight or obese and in those with prediabetes who are 60 years and younger and have risk factors such as hypertension or a history of gestational diabetes. Patients who are undergoing surgery or any radiological procedures that involve the use of contrast medium are instructed to temporarily discontinue metformin before surgery or the, pro or the procedure and to not resume taking metformin until 48 hours after the surgery or the procedure and after their serum creatinine level has been checked and is normal. Do not use in patients with kidney disease, liver disease, or heart failure. Lactic acidosis is a rare complication of metformin accumulation. Do not use in people who drink excessive amounts of alcohol. The next class is sulfonylureas. Sulfonylureas include glipicide, examples are glucotrol and glucotrol XL, Glyburide, examples are micronase and dibeta glynase, and glampyride, example amaryl. The primary action of sulfonylureas is to increase insulin production from the pancreas. Therefore, hypoglycemia is a major side effect of the sulfonylureas. The next class is megalitinides. Like the sulfonylureas, Repaglenide or prandin and nateglenide starlix increase insulin production from the pancreas. However, because they are more rapidly absorbed and eliminated than sulfonylureas, they are less likely to cause hypoglycemia. When they are taken just before meals, pancreatic insulin production increases during and after meal, mimicking the normal blood glucose response to eating. Instruct patients to take megalitinides anytime from 30 minutes before each meal right up to the time of the meal. These drugs should not be taken if a meal is skipped. Next is alpha-glucosidase inhibitors. They're also known as the starch blockers. These drugs work by slowing down the absorption of carbohydrates in the small intestines. Taken with the first bite of each meal, they are most effective in lowering postprandial blood glucose. Their effectiveness is measured by checking two hour postprandial glucose levels. A carbose and miglitol are the available drugs in this class. The next group of drugs are called the thiazolidine dions. They are sometimes referred to as insulin sensitizers. These agents include pioglitazone and rosiglitazone. They are most effective for people who have insulin resistance. These agents improve insulin sensitivity, transport, and utilization at target tissues. Because they do not increase insulin production, thiazolidine dions do not cause hypoglycemia when used alone. However, these drugs are rarely used today because of their adverse effects. Rosiglitazone is associated with adverse cardiovascular events, example myocardial infarction, and can be obtained only through restricted access programs. Pioglitazone can worsen heart failure and is associated with an increased risk of bladder cancer. 
The next group is dipeptidyl peptidase 4 or DDP4 inhibitor. The incretin hormones are released by the intestines throughout the day, but levels increase in response to a meal. When glucose levels are normal or elevated, incretins increase insulin synthesis and release from the pancreas, as well as decrease hepatic glucose production. The incretin hormones are normally inactivated by di dipeptide peptidase 4. DPP4 inhibitors block the action of the DPP4 enzyme. The result is an increase in insulin release a decrease in glucagon secretion and decreased hepatic glucose production. Because the DPP4 inhibitors are glucose dependent, they lower the potential for hypoglycemia. The main benefit of these drugs over other medications for diabetes with similar effects is the absence of weight gain as a side effect. DPP4 inhibitors, also known as gliptins, include citagliptin, which is genuvia, saxagliptin, and linagliptin. Food intake does not affect this drug. The last class is the glucagon like peptide receptor agonist. Exenatide and liraglutide simulate glucagon like peptide 1 one of the incretin hormones, which is found to be decreased in people with type 2 diabetes. These drugs increase insulin synthesis and release from the pancreas, inhibit glucagon secretion, decrease gastric emptying, and reduce food intake by increasing satiety. These drugs may be used as monotherapy or adjunct therapy for patients with type 2 diabetes who have not achieved optimal glucose control with oral agents. Exenatide and liraglutide are administered by subcutaneous injection with a pre-filled pen. The delayed gastric emptying that occurs with these medications may affect the absorption of oral medications. Advise patients to take fast-acting oral medications at least one hour before injecting the exenatide or liraglutide. Acute pancreatitis and kidney problems have been associated with the use of exenatide and do not use in patients with a personal or family history of medullary thyroid cancer um, with liraglutide. Acute pancreatitis is also associated with liraglutide.